After all these episodes of Chip Wars, you might wonder, So which is the best mobile chip for 2012? This is the question behind the Chip Wars series. Since 2007 for smartphones and 2010 for tablets, mobile devices are selling at the fastest rate ever in the history of computing. I hope to keep this annual series of Chip Wars to share some insight into the major changes taking place behind the scenes in the mobile market. So please subscribe, share, and stay updated. To compare devices, we first have to admit real-world performance depends on a lot of factors. Bottlenecks always slow things down, creating a sad experience. Sometimes these bottlenecks are software related. For example, iOS is a very efficient low overhead operating system with a software stack optimized for slower chips with less memory. That's why Apple devices benchmark comparatively well, even though they generally have underclocked cores. For Android, it's the other way around. The OS is so frustratingly fragmented that usually advanced hardware is running last year's under-optimized software. But since Chip Wars is all about hardware, we're gonna save software platforms for other episodes. For 2009-2010, the ARM Cortex-A8 design was the blueprint for all flagship mobile devices. In 2011-2012, we're wrapping up the age of the ARM Cortex-A9. The A9 brings out-of-order process execution to mobile devices in the same way the Pentium Pro introduced it to Pentium desktops in 95. Today, by speeding up frequencies to almost 2 GHz, and also getting more done per clock cycle, the A9 is up to 100% faster than the Cortex-A8, while using less power with the fabrication process below 45 nanometers. Just let that marinate for a minute. Devices have doubled in performance in just two years. This means that flagship 2012 devices play games, browse the web, and respond twice as fast as 2010 devices. Another side note, it's important to remember that final devices may run at different speeds based on where the OEM places the final device on the performance cost curve. This episode focuses specifically on all 2012 flagship A9 chips. They all have Neon Media Processing Engine support to process media and handle cell phone calls more efficiently. To compare the flagship 2012 chipsets, the easiest thing to do is to look at three main parts. Cores, memory, and graphics. Texas Instruments OMAP 4460 for smartphones has been lagging in 2012. It's the launch platform architecture for Android's 2011 Ice Cream Sandwich OS through the Galaxy Nexus. So the fact that it's entitled to the most up-to-date Android OS goes a long way. But setting software aside for 2012, the hardware doesn't really shine like the other chipsets. Except in tablets. The latest OMAP 447 cores boost browser performance in the Arcos 101, past the new iPad and many Tegra 3 tablets, because of its blazing fast processor. And with the power of the our SGX 544 running at full speed, it could be the best Android tablet GPU. In 2011, Qualcomm got a late start to the dual-core A9 race. But this year, the Snapdragon S4 Plus is the only chipset that is boosting performance through its own custom chip architecture, rather than using a copy license like the rest. And the cores are supported by three levels of cache. This is why it's the best core and the most popular Android smartphone design for 2012. And the graphics of the Adreno 225 aren't too shabby for a smaller smartphone display. The Tegra 3 improves performance with brute force by increasing the core count. And with heavy multitasking, those multiple cores will shine. Since it's the launch platform for Jelly Bean through the Galaxy Nexus 7, like the OMAP 4460, it will get the latest OS updates, keeping the Tegra 3 front and center for Android tablets. It'll also be in the upcoming Microsoft Surface, so if we are speaking just about core performance in tablets, the Tegra 3 takes the cake. But one bottleneck is memory bandwidth, but the graphics are pretty good. And in a smartphone, it offers tablet-like speed. The Exynos 4 Quad probably has the smallest market share since it's not in the Galaxy S3 LTE, but it's a powerhouse with a quad core for both the GPU and CPU, especially in a smartphone. This will come in handy when resolutions pass 720p, but again, the memory bandwidth is a bottleneck here. The Apple A5X is huge, literally. It's the monster truck of the mobile chip world. It consumes more power than the whole iPhone 4S alone. This chip was designed designed for one thing, a power-efficient retina display on a tablet. It has the worst core frequency, but it beats out the competition by having the best GPU of 2012, a quad-core PowerVR SGX543. It also has the most memory bandwidth, four 32-bit wide LPDDR2 memory controllers to help fuel the GPU cores. For the A5, this year's smaller process node should give Apple the wiggle room to finally break the 1 GHz barrier in the 6th generation iPhone LTE. And the GPU is no joke either. With the higher clock speeds in the iPad 
Pad 2, it takes second place in mid-2012 graphics benchmarks. But the A5 underclocked in the iPhone 4S puts it behind the pack. So the pressure is on for Apple to deliver an updated, higher clock CPU and GPU that can compete with the Snapdragon S4 and Exynos 4 Quad in the fall. So which is the best mobile chip for 2012? Well, it depends on how you mostly use the device. Of course, forget about competing software ecosystems for a minute. Since tablets are larger, the flagship devices have monster chipsets. For browsing the web, clock speeds matter, and the OMAP 4470 is the best so far. For heavy processing and multitasking, the Tegra 3 wins this round. And for raw graphics performance and gaming, Apple's A5X wins by a mile. For smaller form factor smartphones, batteries and power are the constraints. So clock speeds are usually dialed down to preserve battery life. For browsing the web, the Snapdragon S4 Plus and Pro clocked at 1.5 GHz easily win. For heavily threaded multitasking, the Snapdragon S4 and Exynos 4 Quad are the best with their multiple cores clocked over 1.4 GHz. In graphics again, a properly clocked A5 and A5X are the best. For many people, the most important thing is smooth UI performance as you swipe or tap the screen. Here, memory bandwidth is a big bottleneck. The Snapdragon S4 and a possible 32 nanometer A5X would rule the roost. The multiple processor and graphics cores, improved frequencies, and 1080p video recording would benefit from wide, fast memory and cache in these chipsets. We still have four months to go in 2012, but with the holiday shopping season coming around the corner, it looks like this year's crop of chips from Qualcomm, Nvidia, and Apple did not disappoint, and hopefully Texas Instruments will have a head start next year. If you learned a couple of things, please hit that like button to let me know you want more videos like this. If you do want more, subscribe as we look at the next batch of tablet announcements in September. This is looking to be the best year for tablets. Thanks for all your comments and shares, and there's a Twitter account you can follow too if you have more questions. Talk to you all next week.